But did you know you can actually see the sword symbols without ever taking the tram? Hey guys, Gravity here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Bringing you guys on the channel is a new series where I'm trying to show you guys some helpful tricks that you may not or may be aware of. Some of these are more entry level while some of these are a little bit more advanced and difficult. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it and these are in no particular order. This first trick is one most of you are probably already aware of at this point. All you gotta do is go outside the spawn door and look right on your right and inside that barrier you're going to see a ticket attached to a jacket. All you gotta do is get a grenade to explode around that ticket and the ticket will then appear on the crate in front of you. All you gotta do is hold your interact key and you'll get 500 points. Every time you pick up an artifact in one of the four districts, keepers are gonna spawn. If you take those keepers into the rituals with you and you complete the ritual without killing those keepers, those keepers will actually turn into zombies and you can use those zombies to charge an egg or to get some extra points on low rounds. This also works with the four keepers that spawn when you first enter the rift. So if you want to enter the rift and get those keepers, you can bring them out of the rift and into a ritual and complete it for an extra four zombies on low rounds, which is incredibly useful. Sometimes on a beast mode, all you need is a couple extra seconds to get that last thing turned on. And this little trick here will give you a couple extra inches, which may just be the last couple inches you need to make or break your beast mode. All you gotta do is go to any beast mode pedestal, and obviously you wanna stand as far away as possible from the pedestal while still being able to interact with it. What you wanna do is get as far away from the pedestal as you can while still being able to interact with it, and then walk a few feet forward where you can no longer interact with it, and then crouch. For some reason, crouching either increases the hitbox on your character or increases the reach you have, but when you crouch, you actually can get a little bit further away from the pedestals. This can help you get just a couple inches closer and maybe what you need to complete that beast mode. Tired of those pesky bird rounds? This trick will help you go through a bird round in seconds and it'll make it so much easier. This works in solo or co-op. At the beginning of the bird round, all you gotta do is find a corner. This works all over the map, but here's a few I like to do myself. And as soon as the bird round's about to start, just throw all of your grenades down in front of you. If you do this right, you can clear the bird round in seconds and you won't even notice it ever happened. There are two ways to insta-kill a Margwa. The first being the Civil Protector. All you gotta do is get him to spawn on top of a Margwa. But the second and less known way of insta-killing a Margwa is actually just by unleashing enough damage to it when it first spawns in. This works best with an LMG or a ray gun or shotgun when you have like double tap, but all you gotta do is find a Margwa that's about to spawn, and as soon as he spawns in, you wanna shoot all three of his heads as much as you possibly can. And if you do this right, you'll actually be able to insta-kill the Margwa before he has a chance to attack, move, or do anything. This also works incredibly well if you have a death machine. This trick is probably the simplest throughout the whole video, but it is super useful and incredibly OP and I highly recommend you use this. All you want to do is bring the Gobblegum Danger Closest into every single one of your Shadows of Evil games. For some reason, this Gobblegum makes you 100% immune to meatballs. I have no clue why it makes you entirely immune, but if you have this Gobblegum equipped, Meatballs do not affect you whatsoever and this is incredibly useful when you're training up hordes and you don't want meatballs constantly berating you. And uh, I bring this gobblegum every game and you guys definitely need to as soon as possible. It is super super OP. Want a few extra zombies on low rounds? You can actually despawn any bird into a zombie as long as you have a rift portal open. All you want to do when you get a bird to spawn in, whether it be from a margwa or a pod or just in the map, all you gotta do is go into a rift portal as quick as possible and try and cover some distance from that portal. And since birds can't take the portals, more often than not they're actually just gonna despawn to get closer to you and they'll come back as a zombie. This is incredibly useful if you want a couple extra points on low rounds or if you're charging your sword eggs. But regardless, this is a helpful trick I use all the time. This is a cool little trick I found years back on stream. And it's actually with the Footlight District's totem when you're charging your sword egg. Did you know you can actually charge the egg while upstairs by the perk machine? This is pretty useful in co-op if you have multiple people doing it and you want to spread out a little bit. Or if you're in solo and you just want a little bit more space to prepare for when zombies are coming. Because the Footlight District's totem can be a little bit difficult to charge depending on what round you're doing it on. As the spawns in that little alleyway can get a little crazy. But this is a little trick that's also pretty fun if you want to try something different or uh, go at it a different way. On most maps, you can use traps on high rounds to kill zombies unlimitedly. 
But on Shadows of Evil, unfortunately, traps stop doing damage around like 30 to 40 or so. But an incredibly useful thing about these traps is that they always insta-kill meatballs and birds. And this is actually incredibly useful when you're training in certain districts because as you all know when you're training up zombies and you have like two meatballs coming at you and two birds coming every single horde it gets so crazy so hectic and so annoying and so I always turn on the traps whenever I can because it's incredibly useful to keep the birds and meatballs out while still funneling the zombies in one of free max ammo for you or your squad all you have to do is head into Nero's ritual room and interact with this book here once you interact with this book, you're going to then want to head into the rift and pick up this flag that will be on the ground. Once you pick up the flag, you've actually started a step of the easter egg, and then you want to head into any of the portals into the districts and place the flag at one of the many locations, where you're going to have to defend it for like 15 to 30 seconds against some meatballs and the shadow man. As long as you shoot the shadow man and you defend the flag from the meatballs, the game will reward you with a max ammo. Once you get the max ammo, to get out of this easter egg mode, all you want to do is place the flag at another location and let the meatballs destroy it, and then you'll go back to your regular zombies. But this is still incredibly useful to get a free max ammo whenever you want. You can use danger closest if you want since there's going to be a lot of meatballs. Again, this works solo or co-op, but anytime you need a max ammo, you can do this, and uh, yeah, it's pretty useful. Did you know that the drops you get from pods on Shadows of Evil actually count towards your drop cycle unlike other drops you get in other maps this is really useful when you're like on high rounds or if you need a max ammo and the max ammo is like the next drop in your cycle you can force the max ammo by harvesting pods this is super super useful when you want to get a drop either sooner or if you if you're trying to get to your next cycle sooner so like let's say you have like a double points or a carpenter as your last drop and obviously you don't want those drops on high rounds right but if you harvest pods, you can get those drops and start your next cycle sooner, which can then get you closer to your next max ammo. If you know this and you understand how drop cycles work, this is actually very, very useful on high rounds and just very useful for keeping your ammo good. And just remember that next time you're playing Shadows of Evil is that the drops you get from pods actually do count towards your cycle. With this trick, you'll actually be able to charge an egg through or during a ritual. This is really useful in the canal region at the Ruby Rabbit. All you have to do is place your egg at the totem right there by the ruby rabbit and then head up to do the ritual as if you regularly would. And then once you start the ritual, all you want to do is make sure you kill all the keepers by this little corner here. And every kill you get in that ritual will actually count towards your egg and the souls will still be collecting at the totem. And this is a really, really cool trick as you don't have to kill zombies to charge your egg. And again, you can do it during a ritual, you can do this co-op or solo. And this is even more useful when you combine this with the next trick. Now, uh, this allows you to cancel rituals at any time, and you can do this with In Plain Sight, Near Death Experience, Idolize, Self Medication, or just like Quick Revive to down yourself. And all you want to do is start a ritual, and before about the halfway mark or around the halfway mark, if you pop In Plain Sight or Idolize, this will actually cancel the ritual. Now, this is super, super useful when you want to reset the ritual. And you can just keep collecting souls for a particular region like the canal region and this also works by downing yourself if you have like self med or quick revive or near death experience but it is easiest with in plain sight and idolize and it is incredibly useful because you can do an entire egg location without killing a single real zombie if you do this properly now this is probably my favorite trick throughout this whole video to me this is like the coolest thing i've ever seen in shadows of evil but did you know you can actually see the sword symbols without ever taking the tram? If you use your beast modes and you do the right rollouts and parkour, you actually can get a glimpse at all three sword symbols without ever having to use the tram. Now, some of these are incredibly difficult and take a lot of practice, a lot of time, and you may need to like slow the video to learn them or you know, like pause your game when you're doing them to get pictures of the symbols. It takes a little bit of practice, but this is so freaking cool. Hopefully in the video, I'm showing you guys how to see all three symbols and uh, I'm not that good at it myself. I find some of them pretty hard, but some of them are a little bit easier, but this is insanely cool. You never have to take the tram. This saves you points. It can save you time and uh, it's an incredibly cool trick and I definitely hope some of you guys get to use this and find this cool.
And last but not least, we're going to be talking about the Apothecant Sword. Now, when you deploy the sword and you swap back to your weapons, did you know knifing will actually help the sword prioritize enemies in your location and lure the sword towards you? And this is incredibly useful because you can deploy your sword, and if you enter beast mode, this still works. So what I like to do is deploy my sword, go into beast mode, and then just run around knifing zombies or meleeing them. And the sword will just shred through everything you touch. And this is super, super useful, but you can actually take it another step further. Did you know this actually works on Margwas? You can actually kill a Margwa with the sword without actually swinging at its head yourself and being at a safe distance. All you want to do is have a Margwa and when its eyes open, or even if they're not open but they're like about to, if you just knife or have the sword near you in general, the sword actually will occasionally target the Margwa's head and can kill it. And you can combine both of these tricks and you can go into beast mode while your sword is deployed and you can literally just melee the Margwa until he dies and this is super super useful and to me this is one of the coolest tricks and um, I use this on high rounds all the time going into beast modes while my sword is deployed but if you feel like your sword isn't helping you enough or it's too far away or whatever it may be again don't be afraid just to spam the melee button and the sword will actually be attracted to your location. That's it for this video guys. I really really hope you guys enjoyed as always I put a ton of time into it and I hope you guys learned at least one cool trick You've never heard before and I hope you guys all get to use these tricks in your games Let me know down below what you guys think the coolest trick was and what map you guys would like to see me do next I really really appreciate it guys. Have a fantastic evening. Peace